So I've been thinking a whole lot about bare metal finishes recently. Now there are all kinds of options out there for putting down a bare metal finish on an aircraft. You know, I mean, everything from your good old standard, all clad, gun super metallic, AK's new extreme metal stuff, Vallejo's metal color, decanted to me at AS12, which I don't really think captures bare metal, even though it's called bare metal silver, but it does a really actually solid job of that sort of aluminum lacquer paint look. And, you know, new kid on the block, Mr. Paint. There are other options out there too. There are powders, there are wax-based paints. There's all kinds of stuff. One issue I have with pretty much all of them is while they may look fantastic and they may have done this, you know, wonderful metal looking finish on an aircraft or on just a part, whatever it happens to be, uh, plastic spoons you like to practice with, they don't quite capture the worn bare metal look all that well. You know, if you look at bare metal aircraft from the, you know, from the end of World War II, from the Cold War, you know, everything from P-51s to F-86s, F-84s, F-104s, that sort of a thing, you'll notice that you don't have just a complete clean sheet, beautiful, polished aluminum look. You've got wear, you've got dirt, you've got grime, you've got dings. There's a sort of patina that builds up over time. And it's a matter of how do you capture that? How do you capture those slight tonal shifts that happen due to weathering, due to wear? It's tough to pull off with metalizers because one thing metalizers aren't that great at is spraying small. So that got me thinking, is there some way to pull that off? Is there some way to get that patinaed look? And I started thinking to the black basing and the marbling that I've been using on other things recently and thought it'd be really nice if there was some way that I could apply that and that sort of local opacity shift to a bare metal product. Now, if only there were one that were translucent or sem semi-translucent that would let underlying colors and underlying tonal shifts show through. There just happens to be one. Well, there are a couple, but all class high shine finishes, including all or including airframe aluminum, but also chrome, polished aluminum, a few others, do have that semi-translucent quality. So whatever you put underneath them will show through. That's why they recommend the gloss black, nice and smooth undercoat. The specularity of the gloss black coming through that silver overcoat is what really gives it its shine. But it shows other things through it as well. So what if we were to play with putting down a couple of different colors in sort of that marble coat fashion? Would that give that, you know, uneven patina bare metal look that you see on a lot of Cold War aircraft? That's what I'm going to test. So for this test, I'm going to try a couple of different things. First of all, I have taken a uh, P40M, which I had a failed nose conversion of, so the kit's never going to get built, so I may as well start using it as a paint mule. And I have painted up the wings, so over here is Tamiya's AS12 bare metal silver. Now, as you can see, this is not the greatest in terms of, you know, just a straight up metallic. It is a nice silver-ish look, but it doesn't have that sort of shine and pure metal look that you would really want. But it's rock solid, it's very hard to damage, and I want to play with putting some contrasting tones on top of it. You know, what happens if I were to marble coat black on top of this and then spray the, air, the airframe aluminum down? What would happen then? So that's kind of what that one is to test. Over here we have Tamiya's TS-14 uh, spray paint that has been decanted put through the airbrush and you can see, I mean, this stuff, now that it's been sort of polished down and buffed a little bit, is very, very smooth, very, very shiny. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best I could get, but for the purposes of this test, eh, close enough, right? What I want to do with this test is two things. I want to try, first of all, the marble coating that I use with black basing and see what happened, you know, lighter colors here. I know that white shows through. What if I were to go with more of a gunship gray or something of that effect? Would it still show through and would it be a more subtle effect and maybe get it closer to what I'm after? So that's going to be tested on this side. On this side, obviously, it's going to be the blacks and things like that. I'm also going to test doing a marble coat, which will be more of a diffuse pattern. And I'm going to test putting salt down. 
and then spraying with the salt. So more of a, it's still random pattern, but more of a hard edge randomness, which to me gets closer to what you see on a lot of those, you know, 50s and 60s era fighters that were bare metal. So that's what we're gonna be testing. And this could either be really awesome or it could be a complete and total failure. So let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I have got the black and the AS-12 applied. I've got some salt on both edges. Let me move this a little bit so you can see it. Salt, salt, not salt. So for the AS-12, I'm gonna be using Mr. Paint Basic Black. Go a bit broad here with the salt. So here, as you can see, I've coated the salted side of the AS-12. Now I'm moving on to doing more of a marble coat with the Mr. Paint. So coming back, the marbling is now complete. As you can see here, we've got nice black area where the salt is, and we've got the marbled area. Now, it's time to move on to the black side. Again, we've got the salt, we've got the nice, smooth surface here. So let's do this thing. So I've painted all the uh, all the various elements of this wing again AS 12 over here this is black over the AS 12 just marbled this is black over salt obviously it's much harder edged over on the black side we've got white we've got medium sea gray in here and over here and then this darker patch which barely I know shows up on the camera this darker patch is Gun's Engine Gray, which is a nice dark gray, and it's over here as well. And I wanna see mainly how it performs in the midst of all this. So it's time to throw our airframe aluminum onto some plastic. Woohoo! Okay, so here's where we ended up. Now, as you can see, you know, out to the tips of, each of these wings, the salt completely failed. Um, I think it was an interesting idea. It just did not work at all in practice. The hard edges resulted in local opacity shifts that were just too much to bear. And maybe if you did, you know, black, salt, and then a slightly different black, it might work out for the better. But I mean, honestly, at this point, I'm not holding out much hope for that. I would kind of set that method aside. Also, as you can see here, lighter grays and over here whites didn't really work. Now, the whites look okay at the leading edge of the wing from this angle, but when you turn it, you know, I mean, the whites immediately show up. It looks kind of cloudy. You know, I mean, you can see it in there. It's, it's just not working right. The engine gray did a nice job. I think the key with this is getting something very close to black that's not quite black, because the one limitation that all that all clads airframe aluminum has is when you you know hit it from the side you can see whatever color is underneath it so the engine gray may be a little tiny bit too gray but i think the idea here is sound so i might consider something like a nato black or you know engine gray with a whole lot of black thrown in to get it really close to black but not quite there on the other side i actually think that the Black over the AS-12 worked really well in terms of capturing this overall look. One thing I would note is that the AS-12 is not quite as, it's not quite as glossy and smooth as we've got over here with, you know, the polished black. So it's not reflecting the same, you know, the same sharpness that, that, the, uh, that the black wing is. But I actually like the look better. I think that the silver base with the darker color on top 
really fulfills what I'm trying to go after here. Now I might try to bring these a bit closer together, a different silver base with more polishing potential, and then maybe not going all the way to black, maybe going to engine gray, for example, you know, kind of keeping them a bit closer together. So looking to actually making this, you know, an actual on build application, how would I approach it differently next time? Well, as mentioned before, I would consider using something like engine gray on this side instead of black, you know, get a, you know, a more muted contrast in there so that when you do this, you don't see, oh my God, all the marbling. I would also consider instead of AS12, priming in Allclad's new RAF high-speed silver. So, you know, most people think Allclad and bare plastic and scream, I don't blame you. However, this one, you know, if you get in here and look very closely at the inch, at the uh, directions, this finish may be applied to polished, clean bare plastic. So, there's potential in that. Um, it does yield a almost airframe aluminum-esque finish. I don't think it really captures the RAF high-speed silver that you see on lightnings and things like that. It's not, it doesn't look like um, aluminum lacquer paint to me at all, but it could be a good base, which in concert with the engine gray here or some other dark gray, you know, a gunship gray, um, et cetera, might really pull off this effect super nicely and get this effect that we've got going on over here combined with, you know, the higher reflectivity and shininess that we've got on the black side. So final verdict, um, there's definitely potential here. I think I have a few lessons to take away from this experiment and I am looking forward to applying them to a build in the near future. So stay tuned.